Thanks everybody for the chance to speak today. I'm joined by Michael Blancardo as well. Um, this is Queen and Collins project and as a way of intro to it, it explores the brief that was given to us by GPT to reposition a commercial asset for urban opportunity and a celebration of Melbourne's remarkable neo-Gothic heritage. The design approach aligns heritage aspirations with urban design ones. It disaggregates a cluster of new and old with a network of interstitial spaces that reconnect people with climate, environment, sky and open air, prescient in post-COVID. And it reprioritizes the cathedral room, one of Melbourne's finest heritage interiors, as a focal point. It proliferates edges, revitalizing the site with retail life and creation of openings and integrating with Cathedral Court back into the city system. It was an interesting one from a heritage point of view because we asked ourselves the question just how much needed to be changed to unlock the site. And we do recall Rossi's words about the permanence that we value in our cities, at which point they become a pathology, a block, or through some small amount of change can unlock the city's forces, which we think is what we've done with this. So where the site is, um, cluster of the new 90s tower plus three heritage buildings. It's a quarter of a city block. This was what was there when we started the tower. You're probably all familiar with that remarkable silhouette. Very much a um, commercial uh, lobby feel, very segregated. You can see the security devices. Certainly not a site that invited people in, despite the um, cathedral room being a publicly accessible space. Atria, which um, covered the original courtyards and internalised it. So the existing figure ground, where we often describe it as a kind of blanc mange of these new corporate spaces that had coagulated and um, lost some of that uh, distinctiveness of the various buildings. So our proposal to introduce laneways, move from laneway, away from lobby to laneway by introducing a network of interstitial space, really celebrating this idea of city within a city, many buildings clustered together, each distinctive with their character and qualities. So in composite with those three existing heritage buildings, we added a further four to the northern end of the site. So laneway, not lobby, civic doors open to the city, inviting people in and a reactivated um, street edge condition. Also connection to environment, the idea of the GPT for a future workplace of health, well-being, and connection to each other and place and upgrade to lobbies and amenities, especially to the tower, which was done by BVN. They did the workplace component. Further ideas, this idea of urban furniture, and the sort of spectacle of urban life as part of a social workplace too in the works that we did, which is the podium and ground plane. It's a very complex site consisting of multiple buildings, multiple levels, very different volumes and proportions of space, which were all something to celebrate, albeit integrate for more accessible pathways through the whole site. Complex plan, uh, make it a bit easier for you. This is the interstitial network that we forged through the site. So now there's multiple ways in and out, which I'll just describe here. So north, south, east, west, particularly important new one was the um, integration with Briscoe Lane, which was previously down to a loading dock. We've managed to do works to the cathedral room, which has created a new courtyard there. So the lane is also part of the movement paths. The retail tenancies, so new ones created to the north in addition to the heritage spaces. Um, the pathways, again, that proliferation of retail edges through this more permeable um, site condition. And then this introduction of Campiello's, which we've taken from Venice, the small piazzas. There's a Venetian theme throughout. That's because of the neo-Gothic um, in heritage taking its cues from um, Venice as well, which you see influenced our own work. So further the commercial tenancies, now we've introduced multiple address points so that each of the different buildings has a way into it, uh, which also changes the sorts of floor plates and tenancies possible. So even simple things like on Queen Street, removing that atria so that you have proper gaps between the heritage buildings, moving now to the um, north end, the sort of slight change to the facade to open up the frontage for retail and for the first floor workplaces, which are shared. 
these big civic doorways as an invitation into the site um, and then through into these primary spaces to circulate through. So connections back to the city as well. A lot of extra height was created through judicious editing of some of the existing floor plates, despite a little bit of loss of um, saleable uh, space. We were able to advocate for that for a sense of the civic interior. So you can see the sort of first three levels of shared spaces um, uh, suggest an intrigue, curiosity, and the way in which there is this sort of urban spectacle, the joy of city life, looking across from one space to another, seeing things happen and being part of a bigger community. The workplace fit out by inside these blocks by BBN, but you can see those larger windows open to the street. Again, this intrigue of passage, the pink lanterns, a kind of cue, a, a nod to Mark Square, but also a little uh, wayfinding device through the site, celebrating stairs as a way of moving through. The lift core, rather than being um, securing at the front of the building, is deep within it, so it's um, quite a discreet way of managing security and still being publicly accessible. Moving into the middle Campiello now, these are big doors that when climate is right can be open, so it is a fully open air space, especially prescient with COVID. Things like this urban furniture it looks like a wishing well is where people might stand up, have an informal meeting um, before they go up to their office. Links always back to the city, open air again, removing the glass that was there before, this interplay of new and old. A snippet from the Southern Campiello, a cooler palette here towards the cathedral room, the most beautiful interior, sadly accessible, but really no one was using it. So we managed, this was a big battle with Heritage Victoria to introduce an opening to the Southern end, which has completely unlocked it, integrated it with this um, new courtyard off Briscoe Lane. So it's really tied back into the city. Below oh, that, Okay, below that glass floor of the cathedral room, end of trip facilities. So again, a celebration of heritage and new. And then finally leading out to 380 Collins Street address, um, new tower lifts and stairs for accessibility into that building and a tiny bit of works done to the front of that for access ramp. So to finish up, um, we think we've done just enough to both celebrate the heritage reuse it, revitalise it, turn this former stock exchange is about to become a restaurant, um, back to the sort of life force and integrate the broader site back into the city, all through the imperative of a commercial project. Thank you.